Ну что ж, друзья, еще раз добрый день, доброе утро, уважаемые участники Международного конгресса молодых ученых, медиков, research. И хочется сказать добро пожаловать в образовательный центр высоких медицинских технологий. Сегодня второй день работы конгресса. Мы выражаем признательность организаторам и учредителям проекта, благодаря которым наша встреча стала возможной. Это некоммерческая организация «Благотворительный фонд поддержки молодых ученых-медиков», образовательный центр высоких медицинских технологий, Национальный союз студентов-медиков, инициативная группа медицинских университетов МАЭЦ Москвы, Айду Ресерч. Международный конгресс проводится при поддержке Министерства здравоохранения и Министерства по делам молодежи и спорту Республики Татарстан. Сегодня наш день будет посвящен медицине будущего. Лекторы из разных стран расскажут вам о мировых тенденции, опыте и технологии. В программе также подведение итогов конкурса научных проектов и инновационных разработок в медицине, дискуссии, мастер-классы. И позвольте представить, предоставить слово руководителю медицинской службы по качеству всемирно известной американской клиники Мэйо. Ваши аплодисменты. Аплодисменты Тимати Давлантес. Громче, друзья, поприветствуем. Well, good morning. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about Mayo Clinic in, um, in the United States and tell you about what educational opportunities there are at Mayo Clinic. So I'm going to start first with an overview of Mayo Clinic. How many of you, of you have heard of Mayo Clinic? Okay, many of you. All right. So I'm going to talk about some of the history of Mayo Clinic and talk about the three main areas at Mayo Clinic involving patient care, education, and research. And then we'll talk about activities uh, for uh, students and also postgraduate activities for those that have uh, finished medical school. Now, are most of you in medical school now? So, okay. Well, first, a little history of Mayo Clinic. Mayo Clinic has been in existence for about 150 years. It started back in the 1800s with the original Dr. Mayo. And then he had two sons that also joined the practice of medicine and it grew to be the uh, first and largest integrated not-for-profit group practice. When we talk about integrated, it means there are doctors, specialists, hospital, outpatient, clinic, all in one setting. And everybody is on the same, uh, same team. We treat about one and a half million people every year from all across the United States and 143 countries. This is a driving principle of Mayo Clinic, and that is the best interest of the patient is the only interest to be considered. This is an important principle for Mayo Clinic. So when there are times that there's a question about what's the best way to proceed on a particular question or problem with a patient, we come back to the concept, what's the best for the patient? And this principle has stood for, for several years and, and has been applied uh, all across the world. So the best interest of the patient is the only interest to be considered. <laughs> so our primary value is then the needs of the patient come first. The mission is to inspire hope and contribute to the health and well-being by providing the best care to every patient through the integrated practice, education, and research. And the vision for the clinic is to provide 
unparalleled experience and to be the most trusted partner in healthcare. So today, Mayo Clinic has grown to 61,000 employees, over 4,000 doctors, physicians, and scientists. We have three different locations across the United States. We have the main clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. We have one in Jacksonville, Florida, which actually is where I'm at from the uh, Florida clinic, and one in Arizona. So you get to choose from Rochester, Minnesota, which is a lot like Kazan in terms of the weather, or Florida, which is hot and kind of humid, or Arizona, which is hot and dry, desert. So you get your choice. So again, Mayo Clinic is about patient care, primarily, as well as education and research. And it's all not-for-profit. And what that means is all the revenue, all the money we collect in patient care gets funneled back into the, the institution, into patient care, into education, into research. Uh, it's it's not-for-profit. Um, so the doctors that work at Mayo Clinic, we all get a salary. It's the same amount, regardless of what you, uh, you know, how many patients you see or how long you work. Everyone gets paid the same, and any any profits or extra money gets put back into the practice, either through um, more research or education. And that's an important principle because that's not the way it is throughout most other centers in the United States. So some of the education opportunities at Mayo. There is a medical school at Mayo Clinic. There are currently 42 positions open in the medical school and they get over 4,000 applications. So about one in 10 get accepted. We are expanding the medical school and opening another campus of the medical school in Arizona. So I, I believe there's going to be another uh, 20 or 30 slots that will be uh, starting uh, actually I think this year. We also have a school of graduate medical education. So this is after medical school residency specialty uh, education and we have 281 different residency programs and in, in, in basically every specialty available. Then there's a, a graduate uh, school which is separate from the medical school and this is where there's training doctors and masters programs in biomedical subspecialties. So um, uh, laboratory medicine, uh, uh, research areas that for non-physicians, just, just those that want to do uh, clinical research. There's a program of, uh, in the health sciences. This is where we train x-ray technicians, physical therapists, uh, other support uh, healthcare providers that again are non-physicians but there are 124 different programs for training uh, in the uh, health sciences. And then finally, there's still training once you graduate medical school, you finish residency, you're out in practice seeing your patients, there is continuous education for physicians that goes on the rest of your life. You probably think you're in medical school and you're going to learn everything you need to know today, but medicine is constantly evolving, uh, and and so you have to have continuous education to keep track of all of the new things that are going to be developed once you finish medical school, once you finish residency, you're going to be learning continuously for the rest of your life. So that's the School of Continuous Professional Development. 
which has, you know, on average, a conference every day all around the world. So I'll talk a little bit about research. So the research at Mayo Clinic is really focused on how we can improve patient care. Again, getting back to the needs of the patient come first. So we talk about translational research. And this is referring to research that we can apply to the patient today or tomorrow. So we don't do a lot of biochemical research to try and create a new chemical reaction that might help something in industry, for example. We focus on research that we can apply to the patient. So we're looking for research activities that can either prevent disease or offer new treatments for disease. So along those lines, we have almost 9,000 active clinical trials. So these are research activities in new therapeutics that we are testing on patients. I guess I pushed the button, huh? All right. Um, we also have published, of course, a lot of our research and there's over 5,700 uh, publications in journals that occur every year. And about 2,600 protocols reviewed by the Institutional Review Board. Now, that, the Institutional Review Board is a um, group of individuals that look at all research um, experiments to make sure that they're safe, that they're not going to harm the patient, that the patient understands that they're in a research ex experiment and that um, they, they recognize that, that we don't know that the treatment is going to help them or not, but they agree to go into the program. So that happens with every research program uh, that is involving patient care. So, in terms of what's available for medical student opportunities, there's two main categories that of educational opportunities available currently to medical students. One is an observership or shadowing, and this is where you basically follow around a current a physician at Mayo Clinic and see what they do all day long. You don't have any direct one-on-one uh, -on -one patient care in that situation. You're basically shadowing the physician. The other are medical student clerkships. And, and I'll talk some more about the, the, the difference between the two. So in terms of the observerships, these are available to uh, international students in their final year of medical school. And currently the program is set up where you kind of have to know a physician at Mayo Clinic that you can contact that then agrees to allow you to follow them around in their clinical practice. Now this is in transition and we hope to expand the program to where we can publish a, a list of physicians and contact information for physicians because I suppose many of you don't know a doctor at Mayo Clinic. Um, so it's difficult to, to get into an observership unless you happen to know somebody. Now there are over 22,000 Mayo alumni, folks, that have trained at Mayo all across the world. So you can probably search for someone if you don't know someone. Uh, but currently it's, it's, it's a bit of a challenge, honestly, if you don't know someone at Mayo to get uh, an observership. Um, but we're hoping to change that. 
The other program is the Visiting Medical Student Clerkship Program. So this one is actually where you would have individual patient contact with patients. You obviously would be working with uh, Mayo Clinic physicians, but you would actually get to interview patients on your own, uh, suggest treatments uh, perhaps, and discuss them with your uh, a Mayo physician, and then discuss them with the patient. So this program is, is uh, more structured than the observership program. We have about 500 positions open each year, and they get about 800 applications. And so chances are better for this program um, that you could get into the clerkship program. So the selection is an application process, and the selection is based upon how well you're doing in medical school, so your transcript reports from medical school. You have to take the USMLE, the United States Medical Licensing Exam. There's three parts to that, and you have to take the first part and pass it, and, and your score, uh, on the score that you get on that exam is factors into your application. There also, of course, is it's space availability in the specialty where you would like to work. And also, they take into consideration your, the competitiveness for a Mayo Clinic residency. So again, you know, after you finish medical school, you can specialize in, in, in a various, in, in several different uh, specialty areas of medicine and that's the residency training, the postgraduate training that you could do at Mayo Clinic. So depending on the specialty that you might be interested in and the demand in that specialty, you could have a, a, a better chance of getting a student clerkship. The student clerkship gives you an opportunity to see what it's like at Mayo Clinic and what the training program is like and also gives the physicians at Mayo Clinic a chance to see what you're like and gives you an opportunity to either do well or you know, not. <laughs> um, for international students, uh, there are a couple other criteria for the student clerkship. So again, you have to pass the United States Medical Licensing Exam, step one your final year of medical school, you have to be in, in good academic standing and receive appropriate immunizations to travel to the United States. In addition, you have to demonstrate some fluency in English. And so there is a test of English as a foreign language and this is uh, uh, administered by uh, the testing board, and you may, some of you may be familiar with this test. So you have to take this test to demonstrate fluency in English and have passed the test within the previous two years. You also, since international medical schools are sometimes different in their curriculum than those in the United States, we specify the kinds of uh, courses you must have had. So you have to have had 48 weeks of actual clinical experience with patients and specifies in what areas. So six to eight weeks of medicine, pediatrics, obstetrics and gynecology, and surgery. And then another 20 weeks of electives as verified by your medical school. So these are the main uh, international uh, requirements. There is another unique position in Florida. In Florida uh, has specific state required educational uh, requirements. And so if your medical school is not registered with the state of Florida, 
your medical school has to apply and there's some type of formality that the medical school can then get registered with the state of Florida. And Florida requires that you have passed step two of the US MLE exam. And uh, unless your state is already uh, affiliated or registered with the state of Florida. So a little extra hurdle to, to get into Florida. Now here are some timelines on how you actually apply for the clerkship. There's no specified or required time uh, in which you have to do your clerkship, so it's flexible. You can say you want to go for the month of March or November or February, whatever is most convenient for your schedule. So there's no set block time. The clerkships all start on Monday and end on Friday, four weeks later. So it's a four week block, Monday to Friday. And depending on the period that you want to come, their application deadlines are as shown, shown here, sorry. Um, so the applications are not reviewed until all the applications are in and, and the deadline has passed, then the applications are reviewed. So it's not a first come, you have a better chance it doesn't doesn't do you any advantage to 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 get it in any any time really before the uh, deadline. So if you want it to come in January, February, or March, as long as you have your application in by the first of October, you're with that pool of applicants, and everyone has an equal chance uh, in that pool. All the applicants are reviewed at that time. So some of the details, you can only apply to one location and you can only apply once at a, at a time. Now you could apply for subsequent uh, time periods, but you can only apply for one location for one time period. If you've been accepted for a clerkship, you can't change it, so you want to make sure that you'll be available for the times that you're requesting because you won't be able to reschedule it. You'd have to reapply. Of course, you have to submit the application by the deadline. And the responses, decisions are made about six weeks after the deadline. So as I said, the deadline occurs, then they look at all the applications and it takes about six weeks to get through them all. So within that six week period, you will find out whether your application was accepted. The question always comes up about scholarships and unfortunately the scholarships are only available to US medical students, so there are no international uh, scholarships for this program. Okay, these are all the different areas where clerkships are available and as you can see it's just about everything so we have we even have dental specialties i, I didn't mention that but uh mayo clinic has a dental school as well so if you're interested in that area there is uh dental activities and when i talked about some of the um Health Sciences Act, uh, programs, you see under pathology and laboratory medicine, um, there are training in neuropathology, transfusion, and um, microbiology. So those are both uh, MD physician programs as well as uh, research programs. So how do you apply? Again, the, the, the application is online. There's an application fee. Um, 
And of course, there's a fee with everything, right? <laughs> um, and this is a website where you can get more information and actually where the application, uh, the online application is. Okay. Next, I want to talk a little bit about graduate medical education. Again, this is for residency training once you've completed medical school and training in a, uh, in a specialty. So Mayo Clinic has 281 graduate medical education programs. Rochester, Minnesota, again, is our main uh, clinic, and there's 191 there. But uh, Arizona and Florida have about 45 each. So it's a total of 1,660 residents in training at uh, Mayo Clinic. And you can see the breakdown. You know, most of them are in Rochester, but there's about 200 in Arizona and in Florida. So these are the different areas of residency training at Mayo Clinic. Again, it's essentially everything in terms of, oh, I know what's happening. I'm touching the screen. <laughs> it's a touch sensitive screen too. That's what I keep doing here. Um, so that's, uh, Again, basically all the areas of, of medicine subspecialty are available for residency training. So for graduates outside of the U.S. and Canada, to apply for residency at Mayo Clinic, you have to be certified by the ECFMG, the Educational Commission for Foreign Medical Graduates. And you know, that's, a, that's an exam that you take to uh, certify. Mayo does support uh, J-1 visa programs and, and in some cases supports the H-1B temporary work visas. Um, so I mean, you'll need, likely need one or the other of those. <laughs> there also is a track for uh, for students that want to go into both clinical and research and so it's actually it's a two or three year program that combines both uh, specialty practice a clinical practice as well as a research track so in, in these cases you're you're paired with a uh, researcher as well in a particular area of interest So that's about it in terms of a summary of activities, educational activities available at Mayo Clinic. So um, I've got time for questions. If any of you have any questions about it? Спасибо большое, друзья, кто присутствует. Вопросы? Поднимаем руку. И у нас вот здесь Василий будет переводить вопрос для всех и Okay, I said, I'll be doing the translating for Russian. 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 Yeah, of course. Where is the microphone? Can you please ask me to ask the question? Let's start with So what about the marks and rating system for observership? I mean, for uh, students' preparation. Я спросил про оценки и насколько это важно как критерий. I think the question was how important are the scores in those exams, and what sort of scores would you be expecting? Scores. Yeah. The the yeah, the question is how important are the scores, and what kind of scores are you looking for? Yeah. Yes, and also rating system in university. Uh -huh. um, 
I, it, it depends on the pool of applicants. So it's not any one score that you have that, that, that you have to be above or a threshold. It depends on the pool of applicants. And so it, 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 that's why they're, they're all looked at at one time. So it's sort of on a curve. If you, if you uh, apply and you're the top of that pool, you'll, you know, you'll, you'll do better. It just depends on, on who else is applying when you're applying. Все меняется, это зависит от набора подающих. Если вы находитесь э, в топе среди группы, которая подалась вместе с вами, то у вас шансы всегда выше. Если нет, то нет. И в зависимости от того, насколько сильная вся группа подающих, у вас ваши шансы выше или нет. Спасибо. Можно микрофон сюда, пожалуйста? Можно на русском сказать, если удобно? Так, спасибо за прекрасную лекцию. А я хотела спросить про, знаете ли вы что-нибудь о программах связанных? Вот есть еще отдел, департамент Aging Institute, Aging. А есть ли какие-то там программы по стажировкам? И, и что, а чем вы больше занимаетесь? Какие есть ли у вас какие-то исследования? Там, интересные приоритеты, да? So, thank you very much for the lecture, and there are two parts of the question. First one, are you aware of some Institute of Aging, and do you do any collaborations work to do with aging? And then the second part of the question is, uh, what research do you tend to focus on, and what are your priority areas of research? Me, personally? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, one uh, you personally. Okay. Um, so, the, in terms of the, uh, do we do study of, of aging, um, I don't, there are several areas where we are looking at the effects of the aging process. I, I, I don't, I can't say we have a specialized area that just does aging. It, it is in, um, um, it's in several areas where they're, they're looking at uh, uh, effects of aging. Um, examples would be like in pharmacology, the effects of aging on drug metabolism. So there's, there's work in that area. Uh, we're doing a lot of work on genetics and the effects of, uh, of metabolism and aging on genetics. Um, in terms of my personal area, I'm a primary care physician, family physician. So I see everybody from newborns to geriatrics. Uh, so I kind of do it all. На тему старения у нас нету отдельного отдельной группы, которая занимается только этим. Но естественно мы рассматриваем процессы старения в некоторых разных областях, таких как, например, фармакология и особенности метаболизма при старении, а также генетика. Мои же личные интересы, я являюсь врачом общей практики терапевтом и, соответственно, слежу за пациентами разных возрастов от новорожденных до пожилых. Спасибо большое. Это следующий вопрос. Вот, давайте, девушка. Да, вот рука. My question is, I'm interested in bioinformatics and do you have some uh, training program in bioinformatics in Mayo? We, um, bioinformatics, we don't have a residency in bioinformatics because that there there is no formal residency in that. Uh, we do have an area in the clinic that does specialize in bioinformatics. Um, it's a, uh, the, 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 the organization, the, the, the division is called Management Engineering and Consulting, and uh, they do, they support the entire clinic, lots of different specialties in terms of bioinformatics. Um, but there isn't a specific physician training track for bioinformatics. It just is, it's, it's incorporated into it through this 
division of bioinformatics. Does that answer your question? Вопрос был о биоинформатике. Есть ли какие-то специальные программы для биоинформатиков? И ответ был, что отдельные резидентуры, которые фокусируются на биоинформатике, нет. Но у них есть целый отдел, который называется менеджмент поддержки и консалтинг, который а, интегрирован со всеми другими отделениями и производит например, информатическую поддержку в самых разных направлений. Так что конечный ответ – да, у них есть, они, естественно, занимаются биоинформатикой, но какой-то отдельной программы подготовки для практикующих врачей у них нет. Спасибо. Друзья, еще вопросы? Вот, Дима, можно выходить? Микрофон передайте, пожалуйста, побыстрее. Здравствуйте, спасибо за лекцию. Здесь был, как я поняла, сделан акцент именно на медицинских специальностях, но вначале также прозвучала фраза о том, что есть возможность каких-то стажировок и программ образовательных для исследователей, для молодых ученых. Вот я, как представитель этой категории, интересуюсь, какие, может быть, примеры программ и действительно или есть возможность стажировки не врачей, а именно исследователей в вашей клинике. Thank you very much for your lecture. Um, you have mostly focused on programs for clinicians, but you've also briefly mentioned at the beginning that there are programs for researchers. And so as a representative of a a uh, scientist cohort of uh, this audience. Uh, she's wondering whether you could give any specific examples of uh, real programs which researchers would take and do. We do research in, um, a lot of research in cancer. When you, in terms of a, uh, a, a training program, there, there, there isn't a training program in research. It, you, if you have interest in research and you have experience in research, you can apply to be a researcher uh, at, at the clinic in, in a number of different areas. There's cancer research, there's Alzheimer's research and dementia, uh, but there isn't a specific program you can apply to если вам интересно конкретное исследование, то какой-то э, отдельной программы нет. Если вам интересно исследование, если вы исследователь, то вы можете и начать сразу работать как исследователь. У нас есть множество программ, в частности, рак, э, Альцгеймер и деменция, среди прочих других. Спасибо большое, друзья. К сожалению, нет возможности больше задать вопрос, потому что время у нас истекает. И хотелось бы преподнести Тимоти Даланцу небольшой подарок от организаторов. Там,